Welcome to our new video. Updating your Linux system may seem like an easy task. However, if you are a beginner, even such a simple assignment may have details that could make you scratch your head. So, in this video, we have tried to address the issue of how to update a Linux-based operating system in some of the distributions beginner users are most probably about to start with. So, stay tuned. We will start with Linux Mint, a Linux distribution that usually has a dedicated graphical user interface for tasks that are usually perceived as those that require the use of the command line. The same is true with updates. For that purpose, Linux Mint has an app called Update Manager, placed in the system tray area. So, when opened, the app shows the list of available updates, if there are any. To check for updates, you need to click the Refresh button. Now, when it comes to updates, you need to understand at least one important aspect of the way Linux-based systems work, which we will try to explain in the simplest possible way. Linux Mint, for instance, is based on two pillars, so to speak, and as you can see here, Ubuntu repositories, because Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, and its own Linux Mint repositories, the stuff the Linux Mint team adds atop the Ubuntu base. So, those are the sources your system pulls the updates from. There can be more pillars. In our case, for instance, the system pulls one more update from Google, because we manually installed its browser, Chrome. And last, but certainly not least, Linux Mint has one more pillar it is based on. That's the Flatpak platform. Put simply, that is, the platform that distributes sandboxed, self-updating applications that are usually newer versions compared to those from the Ubuntu repositories. In Linux Mint, there is a slide button dedicated particularly to flatpaks. There, you can also set the obsolete stuff that becomes old after an update to be automatically removed. So, most users will be fine with just hitting the Install Updates button. In our particular case, part of the update is also a newer version of the Linux kernel. Why is that important? We will reveal later in the video. Type in your administrative password and let the package manager to do its job. And since it was a sizable update, the system now needs to be rebooted. New to Linux users usually install Ubuntu as their first distribution. Ubuntu also has an app dedicated to updates, and it's called, well, Software Updater. This application usually deals with updates from the Ubuntu repositories and in cases where users install third-party apps. Here's an example in one of our testing systems in a virtual environment. The Software Updater app picked up the Ubuntu base and some security updates, and newer versions of the third-party browsers as well. Hit the Install Now button, and that's all for it. Now Ubuntu has another pillar, and that is its own Snap software platform, which distributes sandboxed, self-updating applications too. In Ubuntu, users can update these types of apps through the App Center, just press the Manage button on the left-hand side of the Apps window. Here, you can see a list of your apps that are installed as snaps. Or, as you can see here in our virtual environment system, if there are snap updates available, you'll just need to press the Update All button and enter your administrative password. Still, there are Linux distributions that do updates all in one place. Take Kubuntu, for instance. If you happen to be a new Linux user, Kubuntu is a variant of Ubuntu with the KDE Plasma desktop environment. Here, all you need to do is start Discover, Kubuntu's software app. It shows the updates right away. Well, just press the Update All button and that's it.
In this case, Discover is a software app that takes care of all updates in one place, no matter how many pillars, so to speak, there are. And this is not the end of the story. Now, here goes a part for a little bit advanced users, or at least for new users that might face issues in the update process. Let's go back to Linux Mint. Sometimes it happens that in the update manager, everything seems to be fine. However, behind the scenes, issues may happen. Let's start with the command line. In terminal, the first thing we'll do is enter a command that will provide the system with the most recent information about available packages from the repositories. Despite the update manager saying that there are no updates available, as you can see here in the terminal, two packages are upgradable. So if we enter a command to upgrade those packages, the system will show that the kernel packages need to be removed and that there are packages that were kept back. Put simply, those packages need to be reinstalled completely, not just upgraded. Now we will copy the packages that were kept back and simply order the system to install those packages. Then we will repeat the procedure and finally just copy the command the system itself recommended and thus remove the obsolete kernels manually without waiting for the update manager to do it automatically once a week. The procedure is the same for all Debian and Ubuntu-based Linux distributions. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching the video. If you find it useful, please give it a like, share it and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you next time.